my concern here is that if we're waiting for the tipping point of enough people saying the status quo and the headaches of the status quo are are still doable enough for me to deal with to not accede control to a new central authority that i mean we we might be waiting years until there's enough of a tipping point that there's enough schools and institutions of higher learning that are just figuring out their way through this crazy ever-changing world uh, in which there could be a, a again a, a a legal settlement that requires an, an incredible amount of money including one of your member schools having a talent fee apparently being added to some tickets for future ticket sales that we're waiting for the tipping point here is that what you're saying we need to get enough member schools to say the status quo is too much of a headache let's figure out who the authority is and who's in this boat under this new authority and let's secede control. Is that essentially what I'm picking up from you? There, let me, let's acknowledge there's a lot there. Okay. So let me yes. make parts of it into smaller chunks that we can consume. One Thank is you. tipping point, the tipping point issue. Uh, in my view and in the communications to me, we're beyond the tipping point. And, and Rich, I think one of the difficulties, whether it's a point of criticism or not, is the overall college athletic system for decades was perceived to work well, not perfectly, never was, but we've gone through a lot of change and the economic change creates a set of pressures. There's been litigation, hard to say, wow, we're graduating at a higher level. Young people are, are being educated. They're being provided opportunities and everything's wrong. So I do think you had to come to a tipping point. Now does the ability to make decisions in the current environment mandate that all has to be done in a centralized way, because what's at the basis of the lawsuits? It's antitrust. And antitrust doesn't just evaporate because you, there's gonna be a czar, a commissar, a commissioner, whatever the label might be mm. um, for this, this big entity. Um, that's reality. So I go back to say, now nah, I think we're, we're past the tipping point. We're gonna be in this decision-making process, obviously settlements, front and center from a legal standpoint that represents relatively speaking decades of change being made in a matter of months. And I, I do think that's, that's set. Now the desire is to do that collectively in a legally defensible way that sustains broad based college athletics. But we also have to have our eyes wide open to the financial pressures that would come with this economic change. When do you expect this uh, ruling to hit where now you're going to actually see something in, on a piece of paper and how everybody's going to have to divvy up revenue here. Yeah, that one's not up to me. So I am going to avoid judicial predictions. <laughs> That's why you are where you are. Come on. Why don't you just be a commissioner of a whole new thing? Commissioner. Come on. Why are you, you're not interested in that sort of thing deep down. I read yesterday that one of these outside ideas just wants to buy me out. So I don't know how to interpret that. Buy you out? What does that mean? Like where? I don't know. What? I don't know. Everybody has their ideas. So uh, I, I do think, let me go back. I lead a 90 plus year organization. And two weeks ago, I shared with our presidents and chancellors. I feel that weight every day, every day for the last 10 football seasons since June of 2015. I watched my predecessors, Mike Slive and Roy Kramer, carry that weight. I think our fans expect us to solve our problems. I think our fans expect to see Georgia and Alabama play, to Alabama and Tennessee play. We've got Missouri at A&M in a ranked matchup this week, and Oklahoma was at Auburn. We have new matchups. We have old matchups. Uh, we have an incredible regional population and a national following that expects us a 90 plus year old organization to be figuring things out with our colleagues, but not to just walk away from that history. Well, you know, you also know, you just explained why you're uniquely qualified to run a new entity. That might be a better way of doing things nationally commissioner. Right. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I would ask if that new role would allow me to have those Friday nights to come up with Chris Burnham's slogan. <laughs> So no, we're not. No, 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 no. I know. And I listen, I know it's your life and it's your family life and it's your world. It just is something that just appears to be more unwieldy every day. And it just seems to be. It, it, and thankfully, we do get to lose ourselves in such a game in such a moment like, say, Georgia, Alabama. 
and and it does remind us of why we all want it to work in a way that does seem to be fair and equitable to everybody where we're kids who are and again you've spoken so eloquently on the subject matter it's not just about paying kids it's about giving kids what they've they've been told they're going to get and there's no there's no there's no reinforcement of these things that's unified or 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 is so kind of held you know I know we're probably long, no, but, but I'm you've sorry. something that I haven't talked about, which is real. And I, I fully respect our political realities in this country right now. There's a divide. It's hard for bipartisan or really nonpartisan work to be completed. But when you think about the lack of consumer protection, and let's make the student athlete the consumer in this name, image, and likeness world, mm -hmm. the lack of protection for them, I would argue that the stories that you've identified today and maybe a few here and there are but the tip of the iceberg because there's no transparency. There's no oversight. This is done on a state by state basis. The young people on our teams ask us to help make sure that when they're across the line of scrimmage for an opponent, they just want to be on equal footing for what the, the structure is going to be. Um, and, and that's that's a big ask. That's not something that there's an easy button for. That's where, hey, can Congress help? Tough time to do that. Can a settlement make us help us progress? Um, that That's where we are. Can our states help us in a better way? So rather than having 50 state laws that young people have to figure out, can they also provide the sort of protections for young people and help us train them for life? I am concerned, and this is maybe my final observation here, that somebody who lives this name, image, and likeness life from 19 to 22 and then has to go into the job market uh, that entry level moment in that first job of their career is going to be very different from somebody experiencing that 10 or 20 years ago. No complaints. We just need to have our eyes open to the big picture of what's happening around us in this current environment. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.